With 300 men, God brought freedom from evil and oppression. This was the army of Gideon. Today we face a difficult battle. The spirit of fear has gripped the hearts of men. It is time for the army of the Lord to rise up and retake the land. Welcome to Victory in the Valley. Every day we are releasing the weapon of prayer. By faith, families are being set free. Bodies are being healed. And joy is restored. Walking in the promises of God, we expect miracles to happen. Jesus is our King. God is our Father. And the Holy Holy Spirit is with us. This is Victory in the Valley with Kevin Ortiz. And uh, we're just so thankful for what God has done this past week. We've got so many testimonies. I'm going to invite Pastor Pete to come on up and, and share uh, some of the things that the Lord has done this past week. Amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God was so good. He's always so good. Amen? This whole week has just been a tremendous blessing for the body. We have went into the harvest field, and we took back what rightfully belongs to us. Just this past uh, Saturday, we all through the week, but just this past Saturday, we had 24 to 30 people that went out just this Saturday and won 165 souls to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good, but that's not the total. See, it says that heaven rejoices with only over one. So how much shall we celebrate over the one? Amen. I want to tell you, this week alone, with all the volunteers and Bible school students and those that went out, 460 souls were saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And it doesn't stop there. Hallelujah. Praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. People of God, those that are outside, that's our inheritance. We're bringing them in. It's like they said, one soul at a time. I wanted to share a quick testimony. Is uh, I was talking to uh, Sister Sister Ayala. We had prayed right before we left, Pastor. Right before we left, we prayed for we prayed for boldness for those that went out. And she says that uh, the spirit of boldness went over her. She came to a couple, and all of a sudden, as she was getting ready to share with the family, he began to head upstairs. Well, she looked at him. She said, you get back down here because you and your family are going to be saved. When somebody has an appointment with God, no devil around can stop what God wants to do. He came right back downstairs. Not only him, but his family and all his children received the Lord. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. I want to share one more. One more. We had got a call from the church. And there was a couple that was looking for food. They had saw that we were passing out tracks one of the Thursdays. And they gave us a call and said, you know what? We need, we need groceries. You know, we don't have any food. Uh, we're just here. We got like that much of milk left. Well, we sent, we sent out. We went over there. They received... Not only did they receive groceries to feed their bellies, but they also got saved, and they also got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And not only that, not only that, the, he came to service that night, and he heard about that we were going witnessing. He's, he came right after the service and says, you know what, I want to go too. And he went with us for a couple days. And not only did he get saved, but he led six more to the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. I just wanted to recognize, if you went ministering with us, reaching souls, I want you to please stand. Amen. Praise God. 
Those are faithful laborers that went out into the Lord's harvest and are bringing them in. But the thing is, Brock and Holly have come, they have instructed, and now they've went on. But it doesn't stop. We're going to continue pressing on. We're going to continue to go out. We're going to continue to win souls for the Lord because that's what we're called to do. Amen. We're called to do that. So this Thursday, Friday and Saturday, Brother Rick and some team members are going to go back out, and I want you to get excited for souls because there's a spirit of evangelism that is out, and we're ready to go out there and bring the lost in. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, these labored with us, and they sold their time. But my question is, what about the rest of us? If God is putting it on your heart, and he's putting it on your heart to win the loss for him, because Jesus said, he says, go. Go. Go and win the loss. Win the loss. If he's put that in your heart, do not allow fear to come in to steal what God wants to do through you. Amen. So I want to invite each and every one out because there is a hurting world out there that needs to be touched with this gospel. It's a simple gospel. And if our brothers and sisters can do it with no training and then we receive training, you can do it. Just yield to God and see what God can do for your life. Give him praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I encourage you guys to come out Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Just contact the church. I think they're going to meet. Are you all meeting in the morning time or morning time, 10 a.m.? Thursday, 1130. Okay, so come on out. Make sure you get something to eat before you come because we're not feeding you. Amen. Uh, and, and they'll train you and they'll encourage you and you'll go out and you'll see that winning souls is the easiest thing you've ever done in your life. But it's the greatest thing that you've ever done. And you, you're not leaving here by yourself. You're going with Holy Spirit backup. Amen. What we found as they went is that the Spirit of God was preparing the home to receive salvation. That even when they went to the houses, no matter, they, 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 I'm telling you, we got some bold people here. Amen. They went out in the streets and there would be a group of guys that were smoking weed and just having a good old time. And a little lady equipped with a little track on the love of Jesus Christ will walk up to them and, and tell them, has anybody ever told you that God has a plan for your life? Amen. And you know what happened is those guys, they started backing up. And this lady, she led all of them to Jesus, not only led them to Jesus, but she also uh, they also came to her and said, can we pray for my, my, my mother because she's in, in the hospital? And they lifted her up and prayed. I'm telling you, the people of this world are hurting and they're waiting for you. They're still waiting. The world is still waiting for the Son of God. And you're the Son of God that's supposed to go to them. The Jesus that they need is the Jesus that's inside of you. Amen. It doesn't say pastors go and win the souls. Yes, we do. But I only got one voice. But I believe that God's raising up an army. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So I encourage you all. I encourage you all to come on out this week. We're not going to stop. Amen? Amen. Praise, praise God. Now, let me say this. Uh, I've been pastoring, I think we're on our eighth year? Seventh year? Eighth year? Something like that. Kind of forget after two. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the Lord has given us a, a tremendous blessing of seeing so many wonderful, wonderful, wonderful miracles. And I, I believe that those that came here today, if you're sick in body, today's your day of healing. Amen. I pray and I believe in the name of Jesus that you're going to walk out of here pain free, body changed, filled with the, with the Holy Ghost and a testimony on your lips to tell people about what the Lord has done for you. Amen. But, you know, uh, the world needs to hear your story. The Bible says we overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so your testimony is the greatest story that this world could hear. You know, they, they hear about all these other testimonies, 
these other stories about what God has done, but tell me what God has done in you. Amen. And God gives us testimonies. Amen. I want to invite uh, Brother Ayala and his wife to come on up. They didn't know I was going to call them up, but I'm calling them up for today to share a little bit of their testimony. <laughs> Praise God. Come on up, guys. Praise the Lord. Now, this family has been coming to church, you know, since Moses. And, <laughs> you know, their, their children were in my, in my youth group. And now they're all grown and beautiful and strong and handsome young men. And they're serving God and full of the love of God. Uh, but this past year, 2012, I really believe that was a breakthrough year for you all. And the Lord has really done a deep work inside of them. But I want you guys to hear uh, a little bit of what Brother Yala, what God has been doing in his life. Because the Lord has healed him. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Come on over here. Come here. I'm going to let her talk first. They, 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 they've been sharing and telling everybody about what God has done. So they already got a ministry team going on here. And how many souls did you all lead to Jesus this past week? Ten. They led 10 people to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Tell, tell the church what God has done. Um, we're we're going to share our testimony. My husband had stage 4 cancer. And it doesn't matter what the doctors say, what anybody else says. But when you stand firm on God's word, he's going to get you through, through everything. Because God has the last word. Okay? Last year, last year, the doctors, we were at MD Anderson, and the doctors were telling us that they were going to have him on chemo and pills for the rest of his life, that they were only trying to maintain a quality of life and to keep the cancer from growing. Well, we didn't receive it. We got together with my daughters, with my family, and my daughter Cecilia was like, no, Mom, we're not going to receive it. God has the last word. It doesn't matter what anybody says. And she said, we need to get down on God and study God's word and, and, you know, put God's blood over us, Jesus' blood over us every day and stand firm on his word. So all year long, we've been praying and we've been expecting our miracle. At the beginning of the year, do you all remember when Pastor Kevin said we were going to break free and that we were going to see miracles? We just didn't know that we were going to get ours like this soon. In December, we went to MD Anderson and the doctors were telling my husband, that they had this new procedure that they wanted to try on him because he still had cancer in the liver, three tumors, okay? And so we, he had, they, he had, they had him scheduled for surgery. We showed up February the 8th to meet with the doctors. His surgery, he was going in February the 12th. The doctor comes into the room, and he's really quiet. And uh, my husband's looking at him because usually he's really in a real joyful mood, kidding around. So he asked my husband how he was doing, and my husband says, I'm doing good. I feel great. Because remember, we have to confess it. Even though we don't see it, we have to keep confessing how, how, that we're receiving God's healing. So my husband said, I feel great. He comes in with this big diagram of my husband's liver. And the diagram has the liver cut in half. My husband said, when I first saw it, I thought, my God, does the doctor want to cut, cut half my liver out? And, and then we're like, no. So anyways, he starts drawing three big circles on the liver. And he says, Mr. Ayala, these are your, are, your, are your tumors. And I know you had tumors in there because the scans show it back in December. But you know what? I don't know what happened because this tumor right here, and then he puts a big X on it, and he says, it's gone. <laughs> and then, <laughs> praise God. And then he circles the second tumor. And he puts a big X on it, and he said, it's gone. <laughs> and then he circles the third tumor and puts a big X on it, and he says, it's gone. <laughs> and he says, Mr. Ayala, I don't know what happened from December over here, but you're cancer free. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. So the doctor says, I can't explain it. I can't explain it. 
I think the chemo worked. And I turned around and I told my husband, no, that was God's work. <laughs> right? <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So whatever you're going through, don't run away from God. Run to him. He's going to get you out of anything, anything that you're going through. He's proved it in our life. Just stand firm. Don't give up. Amen? Amen. Amen. What do you want to say? I know you said it already. <laughs> Now, now, brother, um, I know I know the testing of your all's faith. The Bible says <laughs> says a lot of stuff. <laughs> Bible says that, you know, many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them in the law. Amen. And the word of God talks about how God turns around adversity and turns it into a blessing. And I've seen in your entire family, everyone's faith just rise up and grow with God. And he, he's not a man of few words. He's actually, a, he, he is a, a police officer that knows how to get down to the nitty gritty. Amen. But since then, he hasn't kept his mouth shut. I think all of San Benito has heard the testimony. And this morning, we got the, the, the San Benito news that this aired. This was Wednesday's paper, and it on the top it says front page cancer free <laughs> praise the lord so my bro my brother jesus works he saved me he cured me i mean i i'm so humble for all this i appreciate everybody i mean I, there's no word to say what happened to me all i can say right here this word is that this letter right here can you all read it <laughs> i am here I mean, <laughs> thank you you know, praise the Lord. Look, I'm a police. I'm a police officer. Been there 23 years. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how many you are. How big you are. Still, when they tell you got cancer, there's nothing you can expect of it. You have to believe in the Lord. You have to have faith on yourself. You have to walk by, uh, you know, by faith. I don't care what you're gonna do out there. I mean, don't ever claim it. Don't ever say you're sick. Don't ever say anything. I always said it was gonna be a testimony for me. to Give a testimony later on. Amen. I said doctors were lying about me because I was I was well. I was a sick. I didn't, I didn't want to say anything like that. You know, I had my family, and they were helping me with it all the way through. So, oh, my goodness. I never thought I was going to be out here saying all this. <laughs> I'm here. Praise God. I love you guys. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, you might be, you might be going through a, a season in your life. You know, how many know that seasons come and season goes? But I want you to have faith. I want you to have faith that not only is God going to heal you, but once you start planning on what you're going to do after he heals you. Amen. If that's the way you're supposed to look at things. Not that the things that, that come your way are there to destroy you, but they're there to turn it around into a blessing. And you have to dream about what God is getting ready to do and how you are going to react to what God does. They received their healing before the healing was upon their body. They heard one report, but they chose to believe the report of the Lord. Amen. And what you're doing here today, maybe you, you're, you're doing really good. Maybe God's just been blessing your life and and all you got is, is a bunch of good things right now, which is great. But receive the word today so that the next time you or your family go through a trial, you're not defeated, but you're more than a conqueror even before the battle. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I'm in training. And I believe that God is raising up a Holy Spirit army in this place. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. Amen.
Okay, so let's go and get into the Word of God. Open up your Bibles. Go with us to 2 Corinthians. Praise God. I'm excited for you. You're going to receive something great from the Lord today. Amen. Praise God. And be like Brother Yala. When, when the Lord does something, don't keep your mouth shut. Tell everybody. At least be married to a, a wife that will tell everybody for you. One or the other. <laughs> Praise God. Say, I'm going to tell someone. Amen. Amen. And you know what happens when you tell people things? God will give you more things to tell them. Amen. You know, he's good. He'll fill your mouth with good things. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, are you there? Verse 6, it says, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. <laughs> You know, when I was a kid, my, my father, you know, I'd have something, my brother would want it, and my father would say, give, it, give him some. You know, I have a candy, and you don't mess with Kevin with candy. And he'd say, give, give, give your brother some. And I'd look at my brother, and I'd look at my candy, and my candy was worth more than my brother. And if I did give my brother, like if I had M&Ms, if I did give my brother some M&Ms, I gave him just the chocolate ones. The green ones were for me. I wasn't a cheerful giver. And of course, my father was never happy when I had that attitude. How much more our Heavenly Father is when we are happy to give what God has blessed us with? The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Another translation says God will not do without a cheerful giver. When we come to God with our tithes and our offerings, there should be this joy inside our heart because God is the one that blessed, it, blessed us in the first place. And it doesn't matter if you have a lot or a little. Just be thankful that God has given you opportunity to give. Because God loves a cheerful giver. And there's, an op there's a power that's operating in your tithes and offerings. The word of God calls it seed. And it says if you sow a little, there's going to be a little reward, little harvest. But if you sow much, you will receive a great harvest. A farmer doesn't go out to a field and say, I'm just going to plant two little seeds. A farmer goes out and gets as much seed as he can, puts it in the ground, because he knows that there's going to be a day of harvest. And there are things that you're sowing today that you're going to reap tomorrow. And those, there's a time where you're going to be sowing you're going to be given to the kingdom of God, but the blessings will, they will begin to overtake you. Where the, the harvest will overtake the sower. Amen. And that's a blessing that God has for every one of us. For those that were in the wilderness when God delivered them out of the, the hands of the Egyptians. And he took all the people out to the wilderness. He told them, I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. In the desert, they had to rely on God providing manna in the middle of the desert, which is like a bread substance. Every morning, they would wake up, the food was there. They didn't have to work for it. They didn't have to toil for it. God fed them. And in the desert, the Bible says that, the, the, that there was a rock. And now every day, these people, about two and a half million people, just imagine the city of San Antonio every day getting up and walking in the desert. For 40 years, God sustained them with supernatural food and a rock that flowed out enough water to feed over two and a half million people plus their animals. Now, that's a great blessing when there's water in the middle of the desert. But not only was there water in the middle of the desert, that rock used to follow them. That wherever they showed up, the rock showed up too. Amen. But that's not God's best. God's best was a land flowing with milk and honey, where the ground had a command to produce according to the seed that's sown into it. And I want to tell you that every one of you have an opportunity to live in God's best. You can be living day to day, month to month, 
crying and complaining that you just got enough to pay off your credit card debt. You just got enough just to make the rent. You just got enough just to pay off the car note from month to month and still live under that chain or you could step on out and say ah from now on i'm no longer living in the desert i'm living in god's promised land where god will prosper me according to my sowing amen and see that's where god is taking us to when you give you are sending the gospel you heard so many testimonies today how people have went out to the street and knocked on doors and led people one-to-one -to, -one to Jesus Christ. But what you don't know is through this ministry, even tomorrow, there's going to be a TV program that's going to cover over 3 million people that will be able to hear the gospel because we're going to be preaching on television. What well, you didn't know. That there are people that are receiving the gospel in different nations because we are not content just to lead people here in Harlingen to Jesus. We are sending the gospel to the nations so they can meet Jesus as well. Amen. We take this commission very seriously. We are preaching the gospel. And that's where our investment is. We invest our skills, we invest our time, and we invest our money. Amen. But I can't go unless you send me. Those programs can't go unless we pay for them. And that's where God says that he will bless you and make you a blessing. Your giving today is going to win people to Jesus. We're talking about families that are crying out to God. Will God please show himself real in my life and they turn on the tv set and there's a program that they're hearing they turn on the internet and there's a an email that they receive him they come into this building and they find people that will love them or people from this this church will go out to them and just tell them about the love of god i can't tell you how many testimonies of people ready to commit suicide but they turned on the TV and they heard a word from the Lord through this ministry that changed them. Changed them that, that, that not only did they get saved, but their whole family got saved. And now they're winning souls to Jesus. People were depressed and now they got so much joy. Their family looks at them say, all the time say, why are you so happy? And they already know the answer. Rick is right here. He's one of them. He was ready to commit suicide, depressed. He had a pharmacy in his house with all the drugs that the doctor You had. are invited to our next church service this Sunday at 11 a.m. Come to Faith Pleases God. Hear an inspiring word. Experience the presence of God. And claim your miracle in the name of Jesus. I want to invite you to Faith Pleases God. I know Jesus will change your life. You can also watch us live online at faithpleasesgod.com. Faith Pleases God Church. All are welcome.